Uh, this is um, assignment 85. Uh, and no, you didn't miss anything. 83 was a cushion day and 84 was a dedicated project day. Um, so don't worry about those. Um, 85 is review for the systems test. Um, and there were a lot of things we did. And, you know, uh, I will say that you definitely need to be able to solve um, a system with, um, you need to be able to solve a two variable system. So 2x minus 5y equals 0 and 2x minus 3y equals 6. Um, that's one thing that we should be very comfortable. I think you're very comfortable. Please solve that system of inequalities. Um, yeah, uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time doing uh, two variable systems because I think you're pretty comfortable with those. So what happens here? Well, if we do elimination, we get negative 2y equals negative 6, y equals 3. Am I done? No. I need to take this and plug it back in. So uh, y, oops, not there for x, but over here for y. So 2x minus 3 times 3 equals 6. 2x equals 15. And so x equals uh, 15 over 2, or 7.5. So I've got an ordered pair. 15 halves, comma, 3. You could, of course, plug that 3 into here. And so 2x minus 15 equals 0, 2x equals 15, and then again, x equals 15 over 2. Great. So you should definitely be comfortable uh, solving with elimination or solving with substitution. Um, that's a given. Um, yeah, all right, we'll go solve that last one with substitution. Er, 2x minus 3y equals 6. So, substitution. Uh, I think it looks terrible to use substitution. I don't want to do it, but oh, you did ask. So, I'm going to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. And remember, this is what I do for substitution. Okay, so um, if I have 2x minus 5y equals 0, I can add 5y to both sides, and then I get 2x equals 5y. I want to solve for one of the variables, yeah, let's solve for y. Okay, so 2 fifths x equals y. Now, I want to take this and plug it back in for y in the other equation. Some students don't listen to the stress on the word other in that last sentence, and they plug back in here, which gets them in sort of a loop, and it's very dissatisfying. You used that top equation already, so when it comes time to substitute in, you can't use that top equation again. You have to plug this into the other equation. Plug into the other equation. If you don't plug into the other equation, uh, you will be sad. Period. I don't want you to be sad. So I'm plugging this in here. 2 times 2 fifths x. Oops. I'm plugging it in for y. 2x minus 3 times 2 fifths x equals 6. Well, there's no canceling. So I'm just going to have 2x minus 6 fifths x equals 6. And I'd like to combine like terms here. <clears throat> so in order to do that, I'm going to make a common denominator. Ooh, or, uh-huh, or it's an equation with a fraction. So why don't we make our lives easier and get away from the fraction by multiplying everywhere, everywhere by 5. So now I've got 10x minus 6x, because those cancel, equal 30. And 10x minus 6x is 4x equals 30. And I know that x equals 30 over 4, which is 15 over 2. See, I can get to the same place. But really, ooh, so fractionate. Um, yeah, there we go. So next. <gasps> um, next, I'd like to take a look at some three-variable 
system problems. For example, um, write the equation of the parabola through, and then I give you three ordered pairs, four, nine, three, two, six, three, thirteen. Yeah, and I have no idea um, if any of these is the vertex or not, so I'm not going to be doing that method that we talked about in the polynomials unit. I have to use the method we talked about here. Do you remember what we said a few videos ago? We said we're going to use this equation, general form, and that we were going to plug in the ordered pairs to build three equations with those three unknowns. It's A, B, and C, because we have X and Y values that we can plug in. Okay, so um, why don't you do this? Build system using this and these, and then come back. Don't go all the way to solving. Let's make sure our systems are the same before you go and solve. Okay, remember this is an X value and this is a Y value, and I say that because it's often right now that people plug a 1 in here and a 3 in here, because 1 comes first. So they plug it into what comes first. Yeah, I know. It's kind of funny that way, huh? So if I plug in a 1 for x, 1, and 1, and a 3 for y, I'm going to have a plus b plus c equals 3. If I plug in a 2 for x, 2 squared is 4a, 4a, a 2 for x, 2b plus c equals the y value. And then finally, 313. So 3 squared is 9a plus 3b plus c equals 13. And, um, you know, when we, when we have this, these go up by 1. Oh, boy, and I know this isn't going to be parametric because they're asking me to write the equation of the parabola. I mean, I guess they could be doing something where, in fact, the answer is not a parabola. Uh, but that's not our class. Um, if this were honors pre-cal taught by Kupla, sure, I'd do that to you. But we just have this class. So I'm going to take these two together and subtract so that C minus C will cancel. B minus 2B is negative B. A minus 4A is negative 3A. And on the other side of the equal sign, we've got 3 minus 6 or minus 3. Oh, wait. Did you have that? Okay, now pause the video, get, get solving. Come back, good, nice. Sorry about that. Uh, and again, I'm going to take these two equations and I'm going to subtract to get rid of these Cs. So I'm going to have 2b minus 3b, which is negative b, and 4a minus 9a, which is negative 5a. And here I have 6 minus 13 is negative 7. Now, you could also change all the signs on both equations, but I'm lazy, and I'm just going to, because the signs are the same, I'm going to subtract. So, minus 3a minus a minus 5a. That's minus 3a plus 2a, I'm sorry, plus 5a, which will be 2a. Minus b minus a minus b, those cancel. Minus 3 minus a minus 7 is minus 3 plus 7, which is and so I get that a equals 2. Remember, once you know what a is, you're going to plug a into one of these equations. Minus 3 times 2 minus b equals negative 3. Minus 6 minus b equals negative 3. I get minus b equals 3. And so b is negative 3. And now I know what a and b are. I can plug them into one of these equations. I like the top one. Uh, to figure out what C should be. A was 2, B was negative 3, and I'm looking for C. So what happens here? Well, I get um, negative 1 plus C equals 3, and C equals 4. Now, we are not done yet. Remember, the question is write the equation of the parabola. This is not an equation of a parabola. We have to take these constant values and plug them in. So we've got, oh, what was my A value? Something like that. Oh, it was just, wait, wait, is it here? No, that's plugging in to 6. Um, I 
No, you're all screaming at me too now because I had it. It was there. It was two, wasn't it? It really was A equals two. Okay, A equals two. So I've got Y equals two X squared minus three X plus four. And so you should be able to write the equation of a parabola given three points. You should also be able to deal with Newton's motion uh, equation. And so we've got time and we've got heights one second, two seconds, three seconds, we've got 48 feet, 64 feet, and 48 feet. And the equation that we use, remember, for this is y equals one half a t squared plus v sub o t plus s sub o. This is acceleration due to gravity. Since these are feet, our check is if a doesn't turn out to be 32, negative 32, we got a mistake somewhere. V sub O is the original velocity and S sub O is the original height. But unlike when we did um, quadratic word problems, we don't have to worry about uh, the meanings of these symbols right now. We just need to find the values of the symbols. And so just like the last problem, I want to take each of these ordered pairs and plug in for T and S, plug in for T and S, uh, to build three equations with three unknowns. So I'm going to have one half a one squared, so one times this stuff is still that stuff, plus one times v sub o plus s sub o, and that should equal 48. Now I'm going to plug in a two. Two squared is four. Four times one half is two a plus, I'm plugging in a two, two v sub o plus s sub o equals 64. And finally, I'm going to plug a 3 in for the t's. 3 squared is 9. 9 divided by 2. So 9 halves a plus a 3 goes in for t. 3 v sub o plus s sub o. And now my height is 48. So there's my system that I need to solve. Um, and again, because this is actually happening. I know this is not parametric, so it's safe for me to get rid of this variable. This is going to be so easy. All I have to do is subtract this equation from this equation. So 1 half minus 4 halves is negative 3 halves a. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 v sub o. And s sub o minus s sub o cancels. 48 minus 64 is negative 16. Okay, there's one equation. And I'm going to repeat that process here. Look, these are the same. All I have to do is subtract this equation from that one. So 2a, or 4 halves a, minus 9 halves a, is negative 5 halves a. 2 v sub o minus 3 v sub o is up negative v sub o. And 64 minus 48 is positive 16. Great, so we've turned this three variable system into two variable system, very nice, and these are the same. So all I have to do is subtract. Minus three halves a minus a minus five halves a is minus three halves a plus five halves a, or positive two halves a. Well, that's just a, so minus v sub o minus a minus v sub o, those cancel. Minus 16 minus another 16, is minus 32. And just like I'm supposed to, I get that minus 32. If you don't get a minus 32, and these are feet, yeah, you've made a mistake somewhere. Okay, so let's now take this minus 32 and plug back in to either of these equations. Um, I'm going here because it was the easiest to draw the arrow to. I get negative 5 halves times negative 32 minus v sub o equals 16. Negative times negative is positive, and we can do some canceling there. 5 times 16 is 80, minus v sub o equals 16. So what do we know? Well, uh, if I subtract 16 from both sides and add v sub o to both sides, I get v sub o equals 64. Um, and since this is original velocity, this is going to be 64 feet per second. But we don't need to worry about that just making the connection for calculus and for physics. 
So we've got a V sub O, we've got an A, we still need to find our S sub O. So I'm going to take my A and my V sub O and plug it in here. I could certainly plug into either equation, but this one looks easiest. So I'm going to have 1 half times negative 32 plus 64 plus S sub O equals 48. So this is going to be negative 16 plus 64 is 48 plus S sub O equals 48. Um, Good. Subtract 48 from both sides. Oh, S sub O equals 0. That's tricksy. S sub O equals 0. Don't forget, we're not done until we take these values and plug them in for those constants. Carefully not erasing the A value. I get S equals 1 half times negative 32T squared plus 64T and plus 0. Now, I'm not going to leave it like that because that just feels uncomfortable to me. I'm going to tidy this up and say s equals negative 16t squared. I'm not going to worry about that. I am just going to put this. So there's my height equation. And you should be able to do something like that. Um, word problems. Sure, we had word problems in both two and three variable uh, systems. So um, let's take a look. Um, you, uh, yeah, okay, so, um, let's do one of those interest problems, and remember, this is not compounded interest, this is principal times rate times time, and in all these problems, we're making time one year, so, uh, this will help us for our value equation, so this problem says, um, you borrow $1,500 to buy a used car, but maybe you should spend a little more uh, so that it's less likely to break down. Um, and the way you get that money is by borrowing it from three people. Three people. We'll call those people X, Y, and Z. Okay, now, um, X is going to charge you two and a quarter percent interest. And Y is going to charge you three percent interest. And Z is going to charge you three and a half percent interest. Okay? Um, we also, the amount, uh, we know that the amount in, uh, that you borrowed from X and the amount that you borrowed from Y is equal to twice the amount you borrowed from z. The amount you borrowed at x, the amount you borrowed at y, that amount is twice what you borrowed from z. So that would give me x plus y equals z. Okay? I've got three unknowns, so I need three equations. Here's one equation. Let's have another equation. You borrowed that $1,500 from these three people. So x plus y plus z equals 15. Okay. And then finally, there's one piece of missing information, and that is that you pay $43 in interest um, for borrowing this money for a year. So we can write this value equation where we say 0.0225x plus 0.03y plus 0.0 3, 5, z equals, so this is the interest, this is the rate times the amount we borrowed from them. This is going to represent the interest for what we owe them. This is the interest rate times how much we borrowed from y. So this makes the interest we owe to y, and this makes the interest we owe to z, and the total of all that interest should be $43. So here are our three variables. Uh, you might want to pause the video now and go back and see about your comfort in building that system. Um, if you're comfortable, we could just move along now. So, um, you know, I know what Z is in terms of X's and Y's. And I could certainly, oops, 
subtract z from both sides and do this. And then just handle it like a, a regular three variable system. But you know, since I know what z is, I could also replace these z's with x plus one and then combine like terms. Um, and maybe we should do this one both ways. Uh, just so that you could see it, it doesn't matter uh, which way, and maybe you get a chance to see. Well, I like that one better. Um, all right, so let's um, erase and give us some space. And I'm going to do this version first, where we have x plus y equals z, and x plus y plus z equals 1500, and 0.02. X plus 0.03y plus 0.035z equals 43. All right, I'm doing the substitution one first. I know what z is equal to. It's equal to x plus y. So when I see the z, instead of writing z there, I'm going to put x plus y equals 1500. I can combine like terms here and get 2x plus 2y equals 1500. In fact, I could even divide everywhere by 2 and have x plus y equals 750. Okay, now here, where I see this z, I'm going to replace this z with x plus y. And that's a little more tricky. I've got 0.0225x plus 0.03y plus 0.035, careful, not z, but x plus y, should equal 43. Well, I need to distribute, and so that's going to bring me to 0.0225x plus 0.03y plus 0.035x plus 0.035y equals 43. And let's combine like terms. So I want to add these numbers together, 0.035. And so I get 0.0575x. And here I'm adding 0.035, so I get plus 0.065y. Uh, and then I have, took care of that, and I took care of that, and so I just have 43. So now I've got these two equations, right? I've got this value one from substitution, and I've got this one, 0.0575x plus 0.065y equals 43. And so now you need to solve this two-variable system, okay? Um, you know, me, <coughs> me I, I'd probably multiply by 0 0.0575 everywhere. But this is going to require me to bring out the calculator. This top equation now looks like 0.0575x plus 0.0575y equals... <coughs> what is that going to be? Um, calculate. 0 0.0575 times 750, and I get 43.125. Okay. So to solve, I subtract because these are the same. So this minus this. That's going to be that smaller number. That's going to be a positive number. But then this will be a negative number? Yeah, no. Sorry. There's a mistake here somewhere. Got to try it again. No, it's very frustrating. Um, so we've got z is equal to x plus y. And this was what gave us 2x plus 2y equals 1500. Feel good about x plus y equals 750. And then we replace this z with x plus y. And that gave us 0.0225x plus 0.03y plus 0.035x plus y equals 43. We need to distribute here. And so we're going to have 0.0225x plus 0.03y plus 0.035x plus 0.035y equals 43. And now we did the combining of like terms. That was 5, 7, 5. Yeah, 0.055x. And here we added 0.065y and equals 43. 
Okay, so we took this equation and this equation and put them together. 0.0575x plus 0.065y equals 43. Great. And from here, I said I would multiply this equation by 0.0575. So I have 0.0575x plus 0.0575y uh, equals, I'm multiplying this, 750, to 0.0575. Okay, let's see what we get. Uh, that's exactly what I had before. I still get 43.125. suddenly. So if I take this equation and this equation, I put them together, and I subtract, these cancel, this minus this. Now that, that doesn't seem like 0.065 minus 0.0575 is 0.0075. But here when I subtract, I get a negative 0.125. And I can't borrow a negative amount. Oh, bother. Okay. It is time to revise and say, drat. But this is like life, yeah? I mean, the, the, the thing about life is it's often uh, one of those uh, things that is filled with you know, little traumas like this, little like setbacks. And, and you know, you may not get to choose your trauma or your mistake, uh, but you certainly get to choose the way you respond to it. And it sucks that you got to do this again, but, you know, maybe that just meant you need to be a little more focused when you do your math. Where's the mistake? Well, the mistake is in this line here. Because what I read to you was the amount borrowed from x and y is twice the amount borrowed at z. This is supposed to be 2z. Oh, that's supposed to be 2z. So, now suddenly the substitution looks a little more awkward because instead of replacing z with x plus y, I would be replacing z with half of an x and half of a y. Because I'm going to divide everywhere by 2. Okay, third time's a charm. So then I can say 1 half x plus 1 half y equals z. So in this equation, I'm going to have x plus y plus 1 half x plus 1 half y equals 1500. And that's going to be 1x plus 1 half x is 1 half x plus 1.5y is 1,500. And if I multiply everywhere by 2 thirds, I could actually cancel out all the fractions and have x plus 1 equals 1,000. So that's a new equation for me. x plus y equals 1,000. Nice. Now we have to replace this z with these. Okay. So that's going to be uh, 0.0225x plus 0.03y plus 0.035 one half x plus one half y equals 43. Now, yeah, don't give me 0.035 divided by 2. It's just going to be so sad. Instead, Let's go over to the magic box, 0 0.035 divided by 2, and I get 0 0.017. It's time for a new thing. Okay, so I get 0 0.0175x plus 0 0.0175y, 43, but don't forget to use over here. Nope. 2, 2, 5, x plus 0.03y. 
Okay, so I combine these like terms. Oh, look at that. 0, then equal 1, 0, 4, 0. X. And then here I want to add these. I'm going to have plus 0.0475y equals 43. And so there's my second equation. So 0.04x plus 0.0475y equals 43. And again, I mean, it really doesn't take that long. And I think complaining about it is, in fact, something that makes the problem much harder. I'm going to multiply everything here by 0.04. I have 0.04x plus 0.04y equals 1,000 times 0.04. Um, yeah, I know I can do it in my head, but I am going to do it on my calculator just so that I don't put 4 or 400 by mistake. So now I subtract because these are the same. I get 0 .0 minus 0.04 is going to be 0 0.0075, and 43 minus 40 is 3. Don't lose that. Divide everywhere by 0 0.0075. 3 divided by 0 0.0075. And it turns out that we borrowed 400 from y. We know that y plus x equals 1,000. So x plus 400 equals 1,000. And we get x equals 600. And now I know what x and y are. And when I add x and y, that's equal to 2 times z. So x plus y, that's going to be 1,000, is 2z. So z must be 500. So I borrowed 500 at 3.5%. And I borrowed 400 at 3%. And I borrowed uh, 600 at 2.25%. All right. And that one's done. So we should be able to do things like that. Um, how about this one? Speaking of geometry, the sum of three angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. The medium, so I want to think in terms of small, medium, and large angle. And so I'm going to say the medium angle, the, the neither the smallest nor the largest, the medium angle, is four more than twice the smallest angle. And I'm also told that the largest angle is seven more than twice the medium angle. Okay, so with these three sentences, I should be able to write three equations. Why don't you pause the video and see about writing those three equations yourself. Hey, welcome back. Um, so this one, the sum of three angles, I'm going to have S plus M plus L equals 180. The medium angle, M, is equals 4 more, 4 plus, twice the smallest, 2S. The medium angle is 4 more than twice the smallest angle. And here, the largest angle is, L, is equals 7 more than twice the medium angle, 2M. So these are my three equations. And I notice that, um, yeah, I notice that I think I actually want to do substitution here rather than have all the variables on one side and numbers on the other and solve by taking two equations at a time. So I know that L here 
can be replaced with 7 plus 2m. So I'm going to have s plus m plus 7 plus 2m equals 180. And now I got a lot of m stuff. If only I could get rid of this s and replace this s with some m stuff. Well, I haven't used this equation yet, but it's solved for m. And I need to get rid of s. So either I'm going to replace this m and this m with all this stuff, and some students do that. Or I'm going to solve this equation for s. And so I would say m over 2 minus 2 equals s. Um, yeah, but, you know, I, I really want to say that, that there are actually more students. One, two, m plus 7 equals 1, 8. There are more students who would rather replace this m with this expression than deal with these fractions. So actually, I think I'm going to... I'm not going to do the substitution here and get everything in terms of m. I'm going to do this substitution here and make everything in terms of s. Okay? So let's see what happens when we do that. Um, we're going to take this stuff and then plug it in there. So s plus 3 times 4 plus 2s plus 7 equals 180. Don't forget to distribute that 3. So we're going to have s plus 12 plus 6s plus 7 is 180. If I combine like terms, I have 7s plus 19 equals 180. I have 7s equals 161. And I'm hoping that 161 is divisible by 7. 161 divisible by 7, please. Oh, thank goodness, 23. So we know that s equals 23. Now we can take that s equals 23 and plug in here. 2 times 23 is 46. 46 plus 4 is 50. So we know that m is 50. And when we take that m equals 50 and plug in here, we can get 7 plus 2 times 50 or 107 for the largest. So our angles seem to be 23, 50, and 107. Do these angles add up to 180? If they do, I feel pretty confident that we've done the right work. If they do not, then we do not feel comfortable that we did the right work, and somewhere in there, there's a mistake. Okay, so you definitely need to be able to do two and three variable systems. I would expect word problem to show up involving two uh, or three, two or three systems, uh, two or three variable systems. Uh, the last thing I want to look at with you is, um, is some inequality stuff, okay? Um, how about this one? Um, can you, write the equation Oops. can you write the equation for and this is zero negative five this is Six, negative five, plus six, three, four. I feel like I need a second point over here. Hmm. Um, yeah, where is that second point? What an interesting omission in my notes. <laughs> Hold on a second while I write the equation of the parabola.
Seven negative twelve. Okay, I think this is seven negative twelve. I hope. I hope. I hope. Uh, so let's um, let's see about doing this. Okay. We have to write the equation of parabola. We have to write the equation of the line. We need to turn those into inequalities. Uh, and I don't want to be shading inside the parabola. I know with the parabola that y equals a x minus three squared plus k. There's our vertex, so I'm using the vertex form. I'm going to plug in another one of the ordered pairs for x and y so that I can solve for a. Negative 5 equals a, uh, 0 minus 3 squared plus 4. Well, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. And if I subtract 4 from both sides, negative 9 equals 9a, a is negative 1. So my parabola is this. That's my parabola. Now what about the inequality symbol for it? I don't know what to put there. Well, we know that um, hmm, we know that 3, 0 is a no, because that's inside the parabola. So if I plug in a 0 here, and I plug in a 3 here, ooh, 3 minus 3 is 0. I get 0 plus 4. I want this to be a no, right? Because there's no shading in here. No for shading here. So I want this to be a no, which means I need that. Okay. So that's my parabola. Now what about this? Well, I have a y-intercept, and I have two ordered pairs, so I can find a slope. Minus 12 minus minus 5 over 7 minus 0. Well, that's going to be negative 7 over 7 or negative 1 for a slope. So I have a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of negative 5. I feel pretty comfortable writing minus x plus oop, 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 minus 5. Y-intercept wasn't positive 5, it was negative 5. But what about the inequality? Well, I know that I'm shading above that line. So 0, 0 should be a yes. 0, 0, minus 5. This needs to be a yes. Well, that'll make it a yes. Oh, but wait, it's a dashed line. That's the inequality I need. And so there we go, and there we go. All right, any questions? Well, I think you should be able to go backwards and forwards with um, uh, graphing systems of inequalities. I think you should be able to solve two and three variable systems. Um, you know, uh, I would love to have you comfortable with parametric, but I don't think I put any on our test. Um, but let's do one just for old times sake. Plus 6z equals 6, and x plus 2y minus z equals 5, and 5x minus 8y plus 13z equals 7. Now, I have just given away that this is parametric, so I'm not going to eliminate z's. Um, instead, I think I'm going to work over here and uh, get rid of x's. Because if I multiply this row by 3, I can combine these. I have 3x minus 3y plus 6z equals 6. I have 3x plus 6y minus 3z equals 15. And I got this equation by multiplying everywhere here by 3, so these could be the same. When I subtract, I'm going to have minus 9y plus 9z equals minus 9. And you know, I'm really tempted to divide everywhere by minus 9. y minus z equals 1. I'm also going to use these two equations. I'm going to multiply this row now by 5, so these can be the same. So 5x minus 8y plus 13z equals 7, but 5 times all of this. 5x plus 10y minus 5z equals 25. And subtract. Well, those cancel, and here I get 18y 
minus 18z equals 18. Isn't that interesting? And if I divide everywhere by 18, I get y minus z equals 1. Baza! When I put these two equations together and subtract, I end up with 0 equals 0. So this is a parametric situation. And remember, with three variable parametric, we say z equals a. With only two variable parametrics, you know, we only have two equations with two unknowns, that's when we do x equals a. We're going to do z equals a, and so if I make this an, uh, like this, an a, I have y minus a equals 1, but I want to solve for y. What does y equal? So I have to add a to both sides. So a plus 1 is y. Now I know z, and I know y. I'm going to take these and plug them in and solve for x. This one has x by itself. I'm going to use that just because I don't have to deal then with dividing by 5 or 3. So x plus 2y plus ooh, minus z equals 5. And so I get x plus 2a plus 2 minus a equals 5. I can combine these like terms and have x plus a plus 2 equals 5. But then I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to subtract an a, and I'm going to subtract some 2, and I'm going to get x equals 3 minus a. Now, this is not done yet. I want the ordered triple. So my ordered triple, 3 minus a, a plus 1, and a. There's my ordered triple, or my solution finding machine. If I plug in a equals 0, a equals 0, I'm going to have 3, 1, 0 as a solution. If I plug a equal to 1 in, I'm going to have 2, 2, 1 as a solution. This is a machine that generates solutions to this infinite solution case. I just plug in an A value and it poops out an equation, I mean a, a solution point. All right, so um, there you go. That's pre-cal. Um, you might want to go back and watch some of these videos again uh, just to get yourself to the really comfortable place with all this material, okay? All right, good luck on your assessment.